Good evening, and welcome to episode 7 of Mortar and Pestle's Radio Classic series. Tonight we present to you the chilling and macabre tale of hubris, The Monkey's Paw. The story, written in 1902 by W.W. W. Jacobs, will no doubt be familiar to most of our listeners. Tonally, it plays very much like the serial episodic horrors which imitated it. Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, and the like. You may take note of the sum of money our main character wishes for. While comically modest by today's standards, $400 at the turn of the century would be equivalent to over 12000 now. Like so many details in these vintage scripts, an insightful peek is offered into a bygone era. Tonight's cast features Scott Fairburn as Mr. White, Melissa Beveridge as Mrs. White, Brian Fairbrother as Morris, and Cademan Ricker Wilson as Herbert and the Visitor. And so, without further ado, lock your doors, bolt your windows, sit back and prepare for Mortar and Pestle's production of The Monkey's Paw. <laughs> There, Herbert, my boy. I got you, I think. Ah, oh, you're a deepin' dad, aren't you? I mean to say he's beaten you at last. Lord, no. Why, he's overlooked. I see it. Let me have that back. I would just... Not a chance, not a chance. Rules of the game. Rules? Oh, you turn what ought to be an innocent relaxation. Don't talk so much, Father. You put him off. <laughs> nah, he... Listen to the wind. I'm listening. Check. I should hardly think he'll come tonight. He'll turn up all right. Mate. Oh, it's the worst of living so far out. Of all the awful out-of-the-way places to live in, this is the worst. Can't walk on the footpath without getting stuck in the mud, and the road's a river. I don't know what the people are thinking about. I suppose they think it doesn't matter because only two houses in the road have people in them. Never mind, dear. Perhaps you'll win the next one. Perhaps... I Perhaps? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you always know what's going on inside of me, don't you, Mother? Ought to after 30 years, John. That's not such a bad place, Dad, after all. One of the few old-fashioned houses left near Little Rock. None of your stucco villas. Home like I call it. And so do you, or you wouldn't have bought it. Nice job I made of that, too. With $400 owing on it. Ah, well, I'll work that off in no time, Dad matter of three years, I'd say, with the raise they promised me. If you don't get married. Not me. Not the sort. I wish you would, Herbert. A good, steady lad. <laughs> Lots of time, Mother. Sufficient for the day, as the saying goes. Just now my dynamos don't leave me any time for lovemaking. <laughs> Jealous they are, I tell you. <laughs> I lie awake at night often, and I think, if Herbert took a nap and let his, what do you call him? dynamos run down. All Arkansas would be in darkness. Lord, what a joke. Joke! And me with the sack. Pretty good idea of a joke you got there, I don't think. There he is. That's him, all right. Wonder what yarn he's got for us tonight. Slip in quick! Awful. Awful. And a mile up the road by the cemetery, it's worse. Enough to blow the hair right off your head. Sergeant Major, good to see you, old boy. So sorry to hear of your loss. Yeah, thank you, John. I've been having the damnedest time keeping up my spirits. Oh, no. So cold you must be. Come to the fire. Yeah, thank you kindly, ma'am. Oh, that's good. It's a sight better than the trenches at Chitral. The rain poured in all day and night. 
Then you have no umbrellas. Umbrella? <laughs> well, that's good. No offense, man, but it's easy to see you were never a soldier. 21 years of service. When he went away, he was a thin young man. Now look at him. He doesn't look to have taken much harm. No, ma'am. Just hardship. Hardship is the soldier's lot. Starvation, fever, and get yourself shot. Well, that's a bit of my own. How's yourself, lad? Not on duty yet? No, sir. Day week, eh? Night week. But there's half an hour yet. Here, Morris. Put your nose in this. Oh, whiskey. And hot. And sugar. And a slice of lemon. Uh, no. I said I'd never. Well, but seeing this sort of night, well. What? None for you, Herbert? <laughs> uh, same for want of being sociable. But my work don't go for it. I've got to keep a cool head, a steady eye, and a still hand. Or the flywheel might gobble me up. <gasps> don't, Herbert. <laughs> no fear, mother. Ah, you electricians, sort of magicians you are. It fair beats me, and I've seen a bit in my time, too. Ah, uh, like your Indian mystics? It's all an act. I tell you, I've seen it. Oh, come on now. Such as what? Come now. I've seen a cove with no more clothes on than a baby, if you know what I mean. He takes an empty basket, empty mind, empty as this here glass. Hand it over, Morris. Uh, which was not my intentions, but used for illustration. Ah, I've seen the basket trick, and I read how it was done. Why, I could do it myself with a bit of practice. Ladle out something stronger. Stronger? <laughs> what would you say to an old mystic chucking a rope up in the air? In the air, mind you. Swarming up it, same as if it was hooked and vanishing clean out of sight. Well, I've seen that. That yarn takes it. <laughs> mean to say you doubt my word? No, no. He's only taking you off. You shouldn't, Herbert. Herbert always was one for a bit of fun. But it's true. Why, if I choose, I could tell you things. But there, you'll get no more yarns out of me. <laughs> Nonsense, old friend. You're not going to get surdy about a bit of fun now, will you? <laughs> uh, I'd like to go to India myself, just to look around a bit, no? You're better off where you are. I should like to see those old temples and mystics and the street entertainers. What was that you started telling me the other day about a monkey's paw or something? Nothing. At least nothing worth hearing. Monkey's paw? Don't go on about it. <sighs> Empty again. How about a top up, John? You said you always carried it on you. Uh, so I do, for fear of what might happen. What's it for? You wouldn't believe me if I was to tell you. I will. Every word. Well, it's just a bit of what you might call magic, perhaps. To look at it, it's just an ordinary little paw dried to a mummy. And what is there special about it? It had a spell put on it by an old mystic. A very holy man. He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives and that those who tried to change it would be sorry. He put a spell on it so that three different men could each have three wishes from it. <laughs> Shh, don't! But mark you, Though the wishes was granted, those three people would have caused a wish they hadn't been. Yeah. Seems to me you've only got a wish for things that can't have any bad luck about them. Let's see it, Morris. Oh! Why, it's all dried up. I said so. But how could the wishes be granted? You didn't say. It would all happen so natural, you might think it was a coincidence, if so disposed. Oh. Why haven't you tried it, sir? I have. And did you really have the three wishes granted? I did. And has anybody else wished? 
Uh, the first man had his three wishes, yes. I don't know what the first two were, but the third was for death. That's how I got the paw. If you had your three wishes, it's no good to you now then, Morris. What do you keep it for? Fancy, I suppose. I did have some thought of selling it, but I don't think I will. It's caused enough trouble for me already. Besides, people won't buy. They think it's just a story, some of them, and those who do think anything of it want to try it first and pay afterward. If you could have another three wishes, would you have them? I don't know. I don't know. No! I'd be damned if I would. What are you doing? Better to let it burn. Let the infernal thing burn. Let it be, Father. If you don't want it, Morris, give it to me. I won't. I threw it on the fire. My hands are clear of it. If you keep it, don't hold me responsible for what happens. Throw it on the fire like a sensible man. I'm going to keep it. What do you say, Herbert? <laughs> I say keep it if you want to. Stuff and nonsense, anyhow. <laughs> Stuff and nonsense, yes. <laughs> I wonder. I wish... Stop! Mind what you're doing. That's not the way. How'd you do it? Hold it up in your right hand and state your wish out loud so you can be heard. But I warn you of what might happen. Sounds like the Arabian Nights. Don't you think you might wish for four pairs of hands for me? <laughs> <laughs> right you are, Mother. If you must wish, wish for something sensible. Look here, I, I can't stand this. It gets on my nerves. Where's my coat? Uh, I'm coming your way to the works in a minute. Won't you wait? No, I I'm all shook up. I, I want fresh air. I, I don't want to be here when you wish. And wish you will as soon as my back's turned. I know it. I know. But I've warned you. I've warned you. All right, Morris. Don't you fret about us. Good night, all. Put it in the fire, John. Good night. Good night. Good night. If the tale about the monkey's paw is not more truthful than those he's been telling us, we shan't make much out of it. Did you give him anything for it, John? A little. He didn't want it, but I made him take it. There now. You shouldn't. Throwing your money about. And he pressed me again to throw it away. Not likely. Why, we're going to be rich and famous and happy. Wish to be a king, father, to begin with. Then mother can't complain all the time. <laughs> Why? Steady with that duster, mother. Be quiet there. I don't know what to wish for, and that's a fact. Seems to me I've got all I want. If you only paid off the house, then you'd be quite happy, wouldn't you? We'll wish for four hundred dollars then. That'll just do it. <laughs> Shall I? Go on, here. I'll play slow music. Oh, don't, John. Put that horrid thing down. I wish for four hundred dollars. Ah! It moved! As I wished, it twisted my hand like a snake. Nonsense, Dad. Why, it's as stiff as a bone. And I don't see the money. And I bet I never shall. It must be your imagination, Father. I swear it moved. Never mind, though. There's, there's no harm done, but it gave me a shock all the same. I expect you find that cash tied up in a big bag in the middle of your bed, and something horrible sitting on top of your wardrobe, watching you as you pocket your ill-gotten money. I wish you wouldn't joke, son. Half past eleven. I must get along. I'm on at midnight. Oh, we've had quite a merry evening. Don't break out the money before I get back. I'm afraid it will turn you into a mean, greedy old man. We shall have to tell everyone that we don't know you. <laughs> I'm off to bed. Don't be late for breakfast, Herbert. Ah, I shall walk home as usual. It does me good. I shall be with you around nine. Don't wait, though. You know, your father never waits. Oh, Lord, what weather. Good night. His bolt stiff again. I must get Herbert to look to it in the morning. 
Mother! Mother! What's the matter? I nothing. I, I, I saw faces in the fire. Come along. What a morning Herbert's got for walking home. What's the time? Quarter to nine. He's off at eight. Takes him half an hour to change and wash. He should be just at the cemetery by now. I suppose all soldiers are the same. The idea of listening to such nonsense. How could wishes be granted in these days? Uh, been thinking about it all night, have you? You kept me awake with your tossing and your tumbling. Yeah, I had a bad night. It was the storm, I expect. I didn't hear it. I was asleep and not asleep, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and all that rubbish about it making you unhappy if your wish was granted. How could four hundred dollars hurt you, Father? It might drop on my head from the sky. Morris said that things happen so naturally that you might, if you so wish, not see the relationship. Herbert will have some more of his funny remarks, I expect, when he comes home. Oh, I know. But for all that, the thing moved in my hand, that I'll swear to you. <laughs> you thought it did. I say it did. There was no thought about it. I had just... What's the matter? What's that? Postman, of course. He's got a letter, John. <laughs> what do you think you'd bring? A ton of coals? John. John, suppose... Suppose what? Suppose it was $400. Oh, yeah. Don't talk nonsense. Why don't you fetch it? It's thick, John. And it's got something crisp inside it. Who's it for? You. Hand it over then. The idea. What a superstitious old woman you are. Where are my specs? Let me open it. Don't you touch it. Where are my specs? Don't let sudden wealth sour your temper, John. How will you find my specs? Here, John, here. Take care. Don't tear it. Tear what? If it was banknotes, John. You've gone dotty. Uh, sir, in close, please find receipt for interest on the mortgage of $400 on your house. That comes of listening to tipsy old soldiers. What does? You thought there was banknotes in it. I didn't. I said all along. How oh, Herbert will laugh when I tell him. You're not going to tell him. You're going to keep your mouth shut. That's what you're going to do. Why, I should never hear the last of it. What is it? Nothing. Do you, do you see Herbert coming? No. He's about due. Well, what is it? Nothing. Only a man. Looks like a gentleman. Leastways, he's in black. And he's got a top hat on. What about him? He stood at the garden gate as if he wanted to come in. But he couldn't seem to make up his mind. Oh, go on. You're full of fancies. He's going. No, he's coming back. Don't let him see you peeping. He's looking at the house. He's got his hand on the latch. No. Well, he turns away again. John! He looks like a sort of lawyer. What of it? Oh, <laughs> you'll only laugh again. Uh, but suppose, suppose he's coming about the 400. You're not to mention it again. You're a foolish old woman. Come and eat your breakfast. 
Where is he now? Gone down the road. He's turned back. He seems to have made up his mind. Here he comes! Oh, John and me all in tatty! Good morning, sir, ma'am. Is this the White residence? Yes. Will you please come in and be seated? Ah, uh, no. Thank you. No, I think not. I think not. Fine weather for the time of year. Yes. Yes, see here. I I've come... Perhaps you was wishful to see Herbert. He'll be home in a minute. Here's his breakfast waiting. No. No. I've come from Mon Megan's electrical works, and... Uh... Uh, why, you might have come with him. Is anything the matter? Has anything happened to Herbert? What is it? What is it? There, there, Mother. Sit down and don't jump to a conclusion. You've not brought bad news, I'm sure, sir. I'm sorry. Was he hurt? Badly. But he is not in any pain. <sighs> oh, thank God. Thank God for that. Thank... Go on, sir. He was caught in the machinery. <laughs> caught in the machinery? He was the only one left to us. Very, very hard. Our firm wishes me to pass on their great sadness about your loss. I ask that you please understand I, I am only their servant and simply doing what they told me to do. I was to say that Ma and Megan's accept no responsibility, but although they don't believe that they have a legal requirement to make a payment to you for your loss, in view of your son's services, they wish to present you with a certain sum. How much? Four hundred dollars. the monkey's paw. Where? Where is it? What's the matter? I'm on it. You've not destroyed it. It's in the living room, on the shelf above the fireplace. Why? I only just thought of it. Why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? Think of what? The other two wishes. We've only had one. Was not that enough? No! We'll have one more. Go down and get it. Get it quickly. Wish our boy back alive again. Good God, you are mad. Get it. Get it quickly. And wish my boy. My boy. Get back to bed. You don't know what you're saying. We had the first wish granted. Why not the second? A coincidence. Go get it and wish. He has been dead ten days. I would not tell you before, but I can only recognize him by his clothing. If he was too terrible for you to see then, how now? Bring him back. Do you think I fear the child I have nursed? I daren't touch it. If you want, I will. No, wait! John. It is foolish and wicked. Wish. I wish my son alive again. Nothing. Thank God. Thank God. Nothing. 
nothing at all. Along the whole length of the road, not a living thing. I can't bear the darkness. Dream. Where's the candle and the matches? Where are the matches? We mustn't sit in the dark. Tisn't wholesome. There. Don't take on so, mother. I'm in love and no longer. What's that? A rat. A rat. It's Herbert. It's Herbert. What are you going to do? It's my boy. It's Herbert. I forgot. He was two miles away. What are you holding me for? Let go. I must open the door. For God's sake, don't let it in. You're afraid of your own son? Let me go. I'm coming, Herbert. I'm coming. Where's the monkey's paw? Don't. The top lock. The bolt's stuck. Come down. I can't reach it. Quickly, help me. It's left. Do you hear me? John, your child, knock it! I heard some. Where did it fall? Help! Help! Will you keep your child from his home? Where is it? Where did it fall? Help! Where did it fall? I can't find it. I can't find it. Concludes the monkey's paw. Join us again in two weeks' time for our presentation of The Fall of the House of Usher. Stay safe, sleep tight, and good night. This radio presentation has been a socially distanced production. Its participants recorded remotely and mixed at MMP headquarters here in Toronto. 
Be sure to tune in to the MMP Podcast channel for new episodes. MMP Podcast can be found on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, and YouTube. Please subscribe to show your support and make more original programming possible.